Cork Dork. On Saturday, I talked about Gerwurstraminer, a grape associated with Germany, in spite of the fact of it being grown in larger portions elsewhere. Today, I'll be discussing an Italian grape that primarily grows on or near Mount Etna in Sicily, Frappato. So why am I doing these videos? Well, the majority of you have probably heard of some of the varietals like Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay, Riesling, Moscato. I, however, would like to introduce you to grapes you've probably never heard of. At the beginning of each video, I will remind you of a few things. First and foremost, anyone can learn how to smell and taste wine. Your sensations of taste and smell are determined by the chemicals that are in food and drink. So when we say we're smelling roses, or we're tasting pink grapefruit, we're not making this up. With time, you can train yourself to seek out individual smells and taste. Swirl your wine glass, close your eyes, and think about what you're smelling or tasting, and this will help you analyze wine. I'll keep bringing up several terms that I will define at the beginning of each video. You already know whether or not a wine is dry or sweet. Body is the mouthfeel you have when you taste wine. It is analogous to milk. If it feels like whole milk, it's full bodied. If it's like skim milk, it's light bodied. If it's 2%, it's medium bodied. Tannin is the astringency you feel in your mouth that some wines have. It makes your tongue stick to the side of your teeth or to the roof of your mouth. Acidity is how watery your mouth feels after swallowing. The more watery, the higher the acidity. And of course, all wines are acidic. Alcohol outside of the label can also be guessed by how much the wine burns at the top of your throat when it goes down. All right, so on to the grape. As I had already mentioned, Frappato is primarily grown on or near Mount Etna in the Italian island of Sicily in the Vittoria region. So, a general map of Italy with Sicily being right here. And then, much more specifically, here is Sicily, and that is the region in which Frappato grows. Vittoria region, southeast. Because this is an Italian wine, I would like to go over the classification system again because this will determine the quality of the wine itself. The lowest level is VDT or Vino da Tovola. This is a basic table wine without geographic designation. Then comes the IGP slash IGT uh, classification, which is known as Indicazione de geografica tipica, which I'm sure I've butchered the pronunciation of that one, as I will the other ones as well. Up one level is the DOC, also known as the Demonizzazione wow. de origine controllata, which recognizes 325 official regions of wine and must meet a minimum quality standards. Then there is the highest level, which is DOCG, or Demonizzazione de Origine Controllata e Garanitata, or Tita. Here there are 73 regions that have to meet the DOC standard, standards and rigorous growing, aging, and quality specifications defined by each individual region. I can tell you on a personal level, I have yet to find an IGT wine that I have ever liked. Of course, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't try one. Frappato is a crossing between the more popular Italian grape, Sangiovese, which is primarily found in Chianti, and also a yet to be determined grape. The earliest recording of the grape goes back to the 17th century, but it can be safely assumed that it was around much earlier than that. 
Oftentimes, frappato is blended with Nero Diavola, another Sicilian grape, to make extremely popular red blends in the region. A little over 1,500 acres is devoted to the grape, so finding a bottle of straight-up frappato is rare, though it can be done. So what can you expect from frappato itself? Well, it's a primarily light-bodied red wine. It can be very dry to dry and has a medium-low amount of tannin, which is approachable to those who are averse to red wines because of tannin. Frappato has a medium amount of acidity as well as an alcohol level. The wine is meant to be drunk in an aromatic wine glass, which I believe I have a picture somewhere on my phone. Let's see, where are you? Should have been a tad bit more prepared. Okay, let's see. Where are you, wine folly? There we go. So on these labels right here that you can sort of kind of see, the aromatic one is the one that is in the middle. Frappato should be served at 55 to 60 degrees, also known as cellar temperature. Should you have the patience, frappato can be stored anywhere from one to three years. You can spend around $16 for a good bottle of frappato wine, which is not a bad price at all. So what are some of the smells and tastes you can expect from frappato? Dried strawberry, pomegranate, white pepper, tobacco, and clove. Pair it with dishes that have roasted red pepper and sun-dried tomatoes for a tomatoes for a fun Italian experience, and it's also a good wine for Thanksgiving as well. If you are already a fan of Pinot Noir or Zinfandel, you should give Frappato a try. Anyway, this is Mark, your Madison Cork Dork. Join me uh, tomorrow at 3 o'clock when I will discuss just what on the earth is rosé. As always, thanks for watching.